Welcome back, everybody, to the GSMC Hoops and Heroes Women's Sports Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Sports Network. We just got done talking about women's MMA and the small number of weight classes and the controversy surrounding that. And now we're moving into our final last segment where we talk about women's BNL. Also, I just figured out how to get the chat back up, got that out of the way so I can see the chat. So if you guys are interested in having like a little interactive conversation, you have questions, comments, anything, feel free to chat them. I can now see them, respond to them on there. Also use the link gsmcpodcast.net to get your questions and comments at the top of the list. Okay, so let's just get started talking about that. I am once again so sorry about those technical difficulties and not being able to pull all of the chats up. Okay, so the Olympics are coming up, as we know, and this is so the VNL and all that is just honestly very confusing with the Olympics. And so I'm just going to very briefly explain how the VNL and the Olympics kind of work together. So six Olympic quota places per gender are contested during the FIVB World to Paris volleyball qualifiers, where the top 24 teams, as per the FIVB volleyball senior world rankings, not yet qualified, are split into three single round robin pools of eight teams each. The top two teams of each pool qualify for Paris 2024. So in this last segment, we're going to talk about the rankings of the volleyball team so you can know who to keep an eye on. The only undefeated teams in the VNL entering the third week of the preliminary phase is Brazil and Poland. Brazil is now in first place in the VNL standings. Brazilians and Polish entered the court with eight wins in as many matches, but only the South Americans managed to keep their record clean, coming from behind to produce a 3-1 victory in their first match in Hong Kong. The Brazil captain, Gabriela Gomierez, has been outstanding for the team, leaving the court with a match-high 24 points with 23 kills and one block. The Tokyo Olympic bronze medalist got tremendous help with fellow outside hitter Julia Bergman, who tallied 17 points, 12 kills, 4 aces, and 1 block in her second start in the VNL. And opposite, Rosa Maria Montebellier, who added another 15 with 13 kills and 2 aces. Bergman commented, and I'm quoting, It was an amazing match, and it feels great that we remain as the only undefeated team in the VNL. It's a big responsibility, but everyone is playing for each other, and it just feels good on the court. We still have some tough matches this week, but we're ready to go. The victory made Brazil pass Poland and take first place in the VNL 2024 with 9 wins and 25 points. The Europeans have 8 victories and 24 points. The results have also kept the South Americans in second place in the FIVB World Rankings with 389.12 points as they could be passed by Poland, where they they currently stand at 366.17 points in case of a setback. The Europeans have opposite Magdalena Stysiak as their main scorer with 18 points, 14 kills, 3 blocks, and 1 ace, followed by outside hitter Martina Kurzikat, who produced 12 with 10 kills, 1 ace, and 1 block. Malwina Smarzek reacted, and I'm quoting this as well. Everyone was waiting for this match as both teams were undefeated. I felt that we missed a little bit of what we did in the past two weeks. We could have served better as it was too easy for them to play the entire time with perfect passes. I'm sure we'll have a second chance to beat them shortly, and we're looking forward to it. We're still growing as a team and are getting used to these big matches, so we need to be patient in sub situations. Brazil will be back on the court on Thursday to face Germany, while Poland will have a day off before meeting the Dominican Republic on Friday at the same time. Defending champions and world ranking leaders, Turkey also had a strong start to the third and final phase of the VNL 2024 preliminary phase in Hong Kong, securing a 3-0 victory over Thailand and extending their current winning streak in the tournament to six matches. Outside hitter Han Valinda was the match's top scorer with a 14 points, 11 kills, 2 blocks, and 1 ace, followed by teammate and fellow outside hitter Ebrar Karakurt, who produced 12 with 10 kills and 2 blocks. Middle blocker Hatia Barmrusik was Thailand's most productive player with 8 points, 3 kills, 3 blocks, and 2 aces. Turkish captain Ida Erdem said, This week is going to be really tough for us. We're trying to get better every day here. Today, Thailand played well, but our blocking and defense were very good. It's good to have a win on the pocket already, but the next three matches will be very difficult, but I'm sure we'll be ready for them. The Turkish continue on pace to qualify for the VNL finals as they are currently in fifth place with seven wins and nine matches. Thailand, who are guaranteed in the finals as the host country, are 13th with two wins and five points. 
Starting on Thursday, the schedule in Hong Kong will feature three matches every day. Besides the duel between Brazilians and Germans, the third day of action will also have Bulgaria and Thailand going head-to-head and the Dominican Republic and Turkey battling as well. So let's go over the other standings. Um, So we already clarified that Brazil is at top and same with um, Poland, but we have some other things to go over here. Okay, so... Italy is at third with seven wins and 22 points, and Japan is at fourth at seven wins and 21 points. We already talked about Turkey in the beginning beginning of the segment, and they're in fifth. China sits at sixth place, winning six games, and they have 18 points. The U.S. is in seventh with five wins and 16 points. Canada is in eighth with five wins as well and 15 points. And then we have the Netherlands with five wins and 15 points. Woo, there we go. So they're technically tied, but USA's point ratio and set ratio is higher, putting them in a rank above the Netherlands. It can kind of get a little bit confusing. In 10th is Serbia with three wins and nine points, and the Dominican Republic is in 11th with nine points and three wins as well. Serbia's point ratio and set ratio is higher, putting them at a better position. In 12th is Germany with two wins and six points, and Thailand is at 13th with the same stats, but lower point and set ratios. In 14th is Korea at one win and four points, and France is in 15th at one win and four points, and they have the exact same ratio as Korea, but a lower point ratio, so that's why they're in that position. In last place, 16th place, is Bulgaria with one win and two points, and they are not doing so hot right now. Hopefully they can get up. I'm confident that Brazil is going to stay in first place for a while. They have always been good at volleyball, and with their strong season so far, I think they have a good chance at staying at the top. Then again, the Chinese women's team, always known for their discipline approach and strong team coordination, could pull off some of sets against top-tier teams. Their performance could deeply, heavily depend on the integration of younger players with veterans, uh, but they have the potential to disrupt the standings, I think. I'm hoping that the USA team can step it up. They typically are known for the volleyball and are good in the Olympics, so hopefully they can get better and move up their standings. But right now, they're not looking too, too hot for them. So that concludes our show for today. Thank you guys so much for tuning in to the GSMC Hoops and Heels Women's Sports Podcast brought to you by the GSMC Sports Network. Your support means a lot to us, so please remember to subscribe to the show and leave a positive review. It really does make a difference. We also invite you to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, and Instagram for more content and updates. And we do also post YouTube shorts on our YouTube channel, the GSMC Sports Network, as well as the GSMC Podcast channel. Thank you guys once again and have a wonderful day. Let's go. I wake up to a little bit of drool on my pillow, feel like it's gonna be a bad day. Yeah, I'm tired of shit and the coffee ain't hit yet. Yeah, damn, ain't that great.